What exactly is the fate of the Kenyan cases that are before the International Criminal Court? Well, with critical elements of the post-election violence-related cases falling apart, questions have begun to emerge as to what exactly the prosecutor is left with. Well, this follows the damning reasons laid out by the judge who's just withdrawn from those cases. Here now is Katie's Asha Mwilu with that story. The latest setback suffered by the ICC prosecutor has now left questions over how strong her case is against the three Kenyans awaiting trial at the International Criminal Court. Lady Justice Christine Van den Wingert withdrew from hearing the case, saying that the prosecution failed to properly investigate the cases against President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto, and radio presenter Joshua Sang. The case is weakening by day. Because when you find uh, witnesses recanting their evidence, some of them pulling out of the proceedings, now a judge saying that uh, I'm not uh, uh, prepared to be party to the proceedings anymore or to be part of the proceedings anymore, the case is weakening. Other inhumane acts Already three witnesses have refused to testify against President Uhuru when his trial kicks off in July. The prosecutor further dropped witness number four, citing credibility issues after the witness recanted his testimony. This also prompted the prosecutor Fatou Bensouda to drop the charges against former head of civil service Francis Modaura. The case against William Ruto and Joshua Sang has also suffered similar setbacks. A key witness in the case wrote to the prosecutor withdrawing evidence attributed to him. The witness also asked to be removed from Ben Suda's list of witnesses. Why is it that this particular case involving the Kenyan suspect does not seem uh, to move on like other previous cases have moved on in the ICC? Could be... Um, the team that conducted its investigations, the Louis Moreno Ocampo team, did not do credible investigations. On the other hand, legal experts argue that the withdrawal of the Belgian judge from the case could also taint the credibility of the ICC. The court is already under criticism from African leaders for lodging cases mostly against Africans. For these cases, especially the Kenyan case to crumble in the ICC, I mean, uh, right uh, uh, when the, the, the debate is raging as to whether ICC is a credible court or just a mechanism that is intended to frustrate Africans, uh, there will be a very major implication. ICC is not targeting Africans. In fact, ICC is working with Africa and ICC is trying to protect African victims. Mm. Judge Robert Frem from the Czech Republic has replaced Lady Justice Christine in the three-judge bench. The trial against Ruto and Sang is set to commence on May 28th, but the deputy president has applied to have his trial date pushed further. Ashimilu, KTN, Sunday night. Well, let's return to the question of security and the latest victims of insecurity in Eldoret to students who were murdered last Saturday were buried on Friday as residents lament over the deteriorating state of security that has been witnessed in that town in recent weeks. Katie's Mercy Kandier with a report of the state of security in Eldoret town and the new county government's plan to address this issue. <laughs> Such was the situation in Eldora town on Saturday, residents taking matters into their hands after authorities failed them. Some street archings were beaten mercilessly by members of the public, this one stoned to death. Residents claim that the crime rate has gone up. On Saturday, two students were murdered and their bodies dumped beside River Sosiani. An incident that left residents of Eldora Town in shock. They lament that certain specific spots in the towns are not safe for them. This road is, not, is never safe. You know, you're not feeling safe because anytime you can be mugged, you know, you can bridge so as you can bridge. Most of the street lights within the town have either been vandalized or are not functioning. On this bridge, none of the security lights installed work. Efficient and effective street lighting is what many residents want. Such that ata 
This particular bridge, Sosiani Bridge, has been marked by residents of Eldora Town as a crime hotspot. And although it may seem as if all activity is normal during the day, residents tell us that at night it is a different scenario. Some say as early as 6 p.m., some of them have been mugged at this particular spot. They are now calling upon the county government to look into their security matters. My government. And when I say zero tolerance in corruption. The newly elected governor for Wasangishu County, Jackson Mandago, says he plans to make the city of champions safe for its residents. And though insecurity is one issue that he has prioritized, Mandago says the transition authority is yet to release funds to run the county. Before the end of the year, to have this town manned by CCTV cameras. We want citizens to be able to go about their businesses without worrying what time of the day it is or the night. Eldora Town remains an economic hub in the North Rift region, being the home to some of the major institutions utilized by the rest of the five counties within the North Rift region. Top security officials in Eldora Town say they are combating the crime issue, saying that armed robberies have reduced drastically, with the recent events being activities initiated by street children, whose numbers have been on the rise within the streets of Eldoret. We managed to arrest two suspects. Uh, one of them positively identified as having been in that group of the six who were involved in the incident. World leader Nelson Mandela once said, safety and security don't just happen. They are the result of collective consensus and public investment. We owe our children, the most vulnerable citizens in our society, a life free of violence and fear. Something governor says he promises the residents of Eldoret, a promise whose delivery only time will tell. We are going to institute... Masi Kandie KTN, Eldoret, Wasingishu County. Well, intense negotiations are underway across northern Kenya to find urgent answers to the cattle rustling menace that informed the bulk of campaign promises in the last election. Governors and members of parliament from North Rift and Eastern regions have began brainstorming meetings aimed at unlocking the potential of their areas by putting to a stop cattle raids and killings associated with livestock theft. KTN's Charity Kimani now reports. Newly elected leaders from northern Kenya have begun frantic efforts to contain cattle rustling, which has rendered their regions. Over eight governors in the Rift Valley region and seven members of parliament in the larger Isiolo are separately converged for talks on how to approach the menace. The Rift Valley governors from cattle rustling prone areas are embarking on the creation of what they call development programs along the borders of their counties as a way to finally end animosities and cattle raids. Previous attempts have mostly failed to stem to raids as some debate rages on whether cattle rustling should be considered as pure crime, a cultural practice or an economic activity. The governors insist the areas have stagnated due to the cross-community and cross-border raids. So, katika area hii yote the grazing zone, ningependa kuoma na kuapili kwa ishimiwa muko hapa. Ya kwamba kama hiyo pia, tungeweza, so that tuwe na hile political will, ya kusema all the illegal farms, siwe mopped up and removed. So, wale ambao na osika kwa mwemba ya wisi, ni wasamburu, waturkana, na nimusiri kwa sabu wa sewa kwa hapa. Waturkana, na waendile. The group plans on introducing farming to the largely pastoralist communities of Samburu, Turkana, West Pokot, and El Guero Marquette. In Tigania East, seven members of parliament drawn from Isiolo, Samburu, and Meru counties met to speak with herders on the best way out of the bloodletting and the theft occasioned by cattle rustling. We realize that we have a tourism uh, capability which can be promoted in all the other counties. That we, we have governors from Isiolo, Samburu, Baringo, Transoya, and Turkana, and West Pogot and Ilgea Marako. We, the governors of the affected communities, 
do reaffirm our commitment to see to it that there is peace within our borders, there is peace in our counties, because that way you can be able to realize uh, sustainable development. Because we want to attract tourists, we want to see to it that uh, alternative ways in those affected areas are provided. So that we have settlement. Charity Kimani, KTN. Let's move to Nyanza now, and this part of the country has for several decades been a melting pot of hypnotic tunes emanating from pop stars who have captured the country's imagination. Now, one of the most important figures in this burgeoning musical scene is a former Air Force captain whose career in the military came to an abrupt end after the 1982 coup. Our Western Region reporter, Fred Omulo, visited Soundcheck Studio in Kisumu's Migosi Estate and brings us the story of a man behind the music. The decade-old soundcheck studio in Kisumu is the crown jewel of a man whose life's twists and turns have shaped entertainment in Nyanza. Dishonorably discharged from the military, Charles Ogweno found himself in unfamiliar territory as all his income sources dried up. It is then that he embarked on an unlikely career path that would thrust him into the country's musical psyche. When I was, uh, when I left the Air Force, I had actually nothing to do. I had got a small sound system, so I started entertaining Wazes, and I was being paid 20 shillings per day, sleeping on a mat. And then from there, Wazes kept on coming, and they, my, uh, my pay per day got increased, and I just found myself in business. But my intention was not business and never music. His trips around the Nyanza region soon became traveling discos that eventually grew into the popular Omega One shows. I, I started getting calls in uh, colleges like Seriba College, Maseno, and then I kept on uh, increasing, buying more and more equipment. And then I, I, I expanded my business to an extent that as of now I've attended almost all the ASK shows in the country. And when I say almost all, I mean Nairobi, Mombasa, Malindi, Bungoma, Kisi. With Kenya's population growing rapidly, bars soon became the social home of music, putting pressure on DJ Ogweno's income. But it is this same pressure that diversified his business into other lucrative avenues. We've done rallies for Raila in uh, Kisumu, his last ODM rally in Kisumu, called Rally actually. We also did... Uh, the rally in Homadoro where there was some commotion. We also did the uh, uh, Uhuru rally in uh, Narok. Yes, we've done also another one in uh, 64 Stadium in, uh, in uh, Eldoret. Ten years ago, he decided to open this studio, the first of its kind in the region, paving the way for some of the most popular artists to embark on dazzling careers. Today, the facility serves entertainers from all over western Kenya. It's all songs of Tony Nyadundo, the original Lonyi Papajay of uh, Raila ODM was done in this studio, this studio. And of course, also gospel, we record a lot uh, in this studio. The end of the campaigns in late February marked the beginning of the low season for him and other denizens in the entertainment sector. But the successes he has raked in over his career have given him the kind of life he would never have gotten in the military. <laughs> From Kisumu City, I am Fred Omulo. We're just about to take a break, but before we do that, let me take you beyond our borders and the East Africa community heads of state are hoping to sign the final protocol on the establishment of the East Africa Community Monetary Union in November this year. Well, they have directed the EAC Extraordinary Council of Ministers to finalize negotiations before November. Well, in a joint communique released at the end of the 11th Extraordinary Summit of EAC heads of state, the leaders also said they could finalize plans to extend the jurisdiction of the East African Court of Justice to include trial of crimes against humanity, on which negotiations are currently at an advanced stage. While the meeting was attended by President Uhuru Kenyatta, Tanzania's Jakaya Kikwete, Uganda's Yoweri Museveni, Rwanda's Paul Kagame, and Burundi's Pierre Nkurunzinza. The heads of state decided not to...